Greetings and welcome to the channel. If you newly subscribed, I am People, and this is the House of David. The House of David, which is Islam, is getting stronger and getting stronger, but the House of Saul is getting weaker and weaker every day. Today's message is going to be entitled Secret Chambers. What was Jesus talking about when he said, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Before we get into it, I want to talk to you about the authenticity of the word and God's word being more important than what we think it means. So what is the Bible saying? What exactly is the Bible saying? That is what is most important. Now, you are entitled to your own interpretation, and so am I. But what the Bible is saying should be the last and final word. For instance, the Bible says in Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man. It actually says that in those words, Without adding any taco sauce or anything, any extras, nothing. It simply says God is not a man. Now, what Christians will do is they will look at the actual scripture and try to tell you what it means. They will disregard what it actually says and go by their own Bible interpretation. This is the reason why. There's 450,000 denominations because everybody has a right to say what color the sky is. You can think it's blue. You can think it's purple. You can think it's pink. Okay. We are all entitled to that viewpoint. But what the Bible is actually saying. That right there is what we should go by. God says he's not a man. That should settle it. Now this wave of Jesus is God. Jesus is God. That wave recently came upon us. Back in the day. People didn't normally used to say that. Okay. That phrase kind of grew on us, kind of like the deity in the Gospel of John. You have Mark being the first gospel. And then the last gospel, which is three quarters of a century later, has more of the divinity of Jesus in it. Now, there's another common scripture that is misinterpreted. It is John 5, 23, where it talks about honoring the son like you honor the father. Now, in that scripture, most Christians will say this means you need to worship God. So whatever you do to honor God is how you're supposed to honor Jesus. And I know a lot of these Christian debaters have passed that teaching along to their little puppets, their little robots. And so now these Christians are going crazy with John 5, 23. You're supposed to honor Jesus like you honor the father. Now, there's a problem with that scripture. It does not mention God. It doesn't. It actually mentions father. And father in the Bible doesn't necessarily mean father, God. Now, Paul called himself the father. There's many scriptures in the Bible that does not mean necessarily God because you said father. So that's adding to the word and adding to the word. There is a penalty for that. That's seen in the book of Revelation. You ain't supposed to add to the word. Now, when Jesus said, I am my father is one. Do you really believe that he was talking about God almighty? The one who blows with his nostrils and the mountains move out of the way. The one whom when he came down, the children of Israel was so afraid when he spoke. Do you actually mean that Jesus was God in the flesh? That makes no sense. If Jesus was God in the flesh, he would be completely immortal. Okay. And that right there would violate what the prophet Moses told us. He told us God is not a man. Now, you can't ignore what Moses told us all because of some anonymous gospel writer by the name of John told us. You can't ignore Moses all because of what Paul came along and told us when Jesus said, I am my father is one that does not make him God the father. He also told us that we are all one. You and me and John 17 are all one with the father. When Jesus claimed to be the son of God, 
He also said that you are gods. And we know that in the law of Moses, we are told not to worship no other God. Even Jesus, when he was tempted, he told Satan, get thee behind me. As it is written, you should worship the Lord, your God, and him alone. So in John 5, 23, don't be deceived. All right. He didn't say worship. He didn't say that. And if he said worship, you should not believe it. Okay. You should go by what Moses told us because Jesus said he did not come to destroy the law of Moses, but to confirm it. Now going on, there's so much going on with Jesus being the father, Jesus being the father, Jesus being the father. And all this stuff is lies. Jesus did not know when he would return. If the Bible says God has committed all judgment into the hand of the son, how come Jesus does not know when he will return? That right there is something you did not fully grasp. When he said that he and his father is one, he was talking about Paul. He was talking about the Joseph of Jesus. Think about it. Why was Joseph present during the supernatural birth of Jesus Christ? What was the purpose of Joseph? Joseph was a picture of Jesus' twin brother. And his twin brother was the apostate Paul who did a horrible thing he claimed to be the father now jesus says call no man your father you have only but one father call no man your master you have only one master in the quran the prophet muhammad is told that he is not the father of any one of his men paul took it upon himself to claim to be the father. He says it twice in Philemon. You need to study your Bible. This right here was serious. It wasn't no joke. This is the reason why Jesus was saying, I am our father is one. He's trying to get you to see that him and Paul are one. Him and Paul is the same. Now, most of you, you hearing something like this, you might go crazy. That's because the teachers of the past we've had have failed to fully understand the Bible. Jesus is telling you. There's a man coming. By the name of Paul. The wolf in sheep clothing. If he's in the desert. Do not believe it. If he's in the secret chambers. Okay. Do not go in. What was all that talking about? That is deep right there. He said if he's in the secret chambers. Now let's go to the first time. Chamber. Is mentioned in the Bible. This is going to be in the story of Joseph. This is going to be Genesis 43 and 30. And Joseph made haste for his bowels did yearn upon his brother and he sought where to weep and he entered into his chamber and wept there. Why was he crying? He wasn't crying because of all the other brothers. He was crying about one brother in particular, and it was Benjamin. You see, in the Bible, in Revelations 1 and 7, it talks about the Son of Man and how there will be mourning and weeping. When we look upon the one whom was pierced. Now, stop thinking about some damn javelin going through Jesus. Pierced is going into a heartbreak. This is going into the man who betrayed him. This is going into the man who has caused him to die as a public example. This is going to the man who is responsible for the huge mess that the Messiah has to clean up. This is going into Paul from the tribe of Benjamin, whose symbol is the wolf. This is all Paul's fault. He was the Moses who murdered the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Now, Joseph was a picture of Christ. And Paul was the one who murdered Jesus on biblical record and hid him 
in the sand. In other words, don't nobody really know about this. That's why it's important that you share this channel. This is what kills the devil. Okay, when we tell the truth about Paul, when we bring up the other brother. Okay, this is why Jacob, who name means deceiver, was so mad about. He said, why did you tell him about another brother? And that brother is Benjamin. It was Benjamin's sack whom Joseph put the cup in. And that cup was used for divination. Okay, that was the cup of sorcery. That was the cup of witchcraft. And it was put in Benjamin's sack. And that is proof that the letters of Paul is nothing more than witchcraft. This is the reason why he was able to foresee the nation of Islam and curse it. In Galatians 1 and 8. Now, most Christians get excited, okay, and think they can debunk Islam by Galatians 1 and 8. But that's proof. That Paul was using witchcraft. He was using divination. This is the reason why Joseph put the cup in Benjamin's sack. So let's get back to the chambers. Okay. Jesus said, if he's in the wilderness, do not believe it. We know that Paul came out of the wilderness of Arabia before he went into Damascus, before he went into Jerusalem. Now, there's a story of a man by the name of Ehud. OK, this man was a man of Benjamin. And this story is going to be in Judges 315. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gerah, a Benjamite, a man left handed. And by him, the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger, which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment, under his right thigh. Now, this is going into the letters of Paul. OK, this is going into the Bible, the two edged sword. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself turned again from the queries that were by Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him and he was sitting in a summer parlor, which he had for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. And Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh. And he thrust it into his belly. And the haft also went in after the blade. And the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly and the dirt came out. Then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. When he was gone out, his servants came. And when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked. They said, surely he covereth his feet in his summer chamber. So a man was killed. Inside of the secret chamber by a man of Benjamin. He said, I have a message from God for thee. Now think about it. Open up your mind. This is Ehud. Four letters. This is a picture of Paul. See, four letters. This man was in the king's chamber. Who is the king? God was king. When the children of Israel wanted a king, who was given to them? It was Saul. Another name for Paul, it was Saul. And God told Samuel, they did not reject you. They rejected me. So the children of Israel killed God Almighty when they asked for a king. And that's why the first king was given to them was Saul. It was Saul. He said, I have a message. This is a picture of Paul 
with his New Testament destroying the father. Oh, he killed the father. Get it? The fat, heavy man. This heavy man is going into the father. And it was the skinny cows that destroyed the fat flesh cows. The teachings of Paul has destroyed God's very own letters that he wrote with his own finger. This man of Benjamin in the secret chamber was none other than Paul. This is what Jesus was talking about. He said, I have a message. Okay, he had a message from the dog. <laughs> the wolf in sheep clothing. Jesus said, beware. You say beware when there's a dog outside, right? Beware of the wolf in sheep clothing. Now let's go to 2 Samuel 4 and 7. For when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his chamber, and they smote him and slew him and beheaded him and took his head, and they got them away through the plain all night. Now most Christians definitely won't even know what this story is even talking about. But this is talking about Ishbosheth, the man whom Abner elected to be king. Of the house of Saul. Okay. And this man actually was Saul's son. Saul's son. And the men of Benjamin killed him in his bedchamber. Now that's a picture of Christ's murder. Christ was murdered by Paul on biblical record. Think of Abner. Abner had King Saul's concubine but yet he elects his son to be king. Now this is a picture of what Paul is doing. Paul has made Jesus Lord, although he is father of the church. And Ishbosheth, which the Bible says was a man that was more righteous than them, they killed. And that's why when they killed Ishbosheth, thinking they was going to be rewarded by David, David had the men killed. This was a picture of what Paul the wolf has done to the prophet Esau. Oh, peace be upon him. And Jesus is telling you, beware if he's in the chamber. Who's in the chamber? The wolf is in the chamber. Who was in the wilderness? The wolf was in the wilderness. His name is Paul from the tribe of Benjamin. His symbol is the wolf. He called his church saints. He was in Arabia. He wanted to be the last and final messenger. Paul knew the Deuteronomy 33 and 2 prophecy. This is the prophecy that your pastor knows nothing about. This is the prophecy that your camp leader knows nothing about. In Deuteronomy 33 and 2, it speaks of three messengers. It speaks of Moses. And then it speaks of the prophet Esau, get it? Esau, okay, the eldest son. This is where Seir comes from. It comes from the nation of Edom. This is going into Esau. This is going into Esau. And keep in mind that Seir is right next to Judah. And this was the mountains where Jesus' ministry began. So in Deuteronomy 33 and 2, it's speaking of Moses briefly. And then it's speaking of the prophet Esau briefly. But it goes into great detail with this last and final messenger. It says, he shined from Mount Paran. Now, Paran is Mecca. This is Arabia. And he came with ten thousands of saints. This is the first time saints is mentioned in the Bible. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. This is going into a new book or a message from God. Okay. 13 letters. Okay. Paul thought he was this guy. That's why he was in Arabia. Then he talks about Ishmael and Isaac being a covenant. Two sons, two covenants. Abraham has eight sons, but he says, skip those. They are not the children of God. He only wants to focus on Ishmael and Isaac. And what is he saying in Galatians chapter 4? He is saying two sons, two covenants. Ishmael persecuted Isaac. And he is saying that he was the Ishmael 
who's been persecuting Isaac because he was persecuting the church. And now Paul is claiming to be the last and final one who was seen of Christ and he's indicating that he is the last and final messenger. Notice, out of Arabia. And now he's calling the church saints, 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 saints. All the time, saints, 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 saints. All the time. Where do you think he got that from? He stole that from Deuteronomy 33 and 2, the first time saints is mentioned. And he is going by that because he believes he's somebody. That's why Jesus called him a thief. Paul looked at Deuteronomy 33 and 2. He said, okay, Sinai is talking about Moses. Then he looked at Sierra and said, oh, that's talking about Jesus. But he says, oh, Paran, that's talking about me. This is like Nathaniel looking in Ezekiel 37 and saying, oh, that's how you I see. That's like him going into Revelations chapter 1 and saying, oh, that's how you I see. Paul looked into the Bible, saw, saw something. He thought he was the last and final messenger. Okay. And keep in mind, Joseph put the cup of divination in Benjamin's sack. And the Bible says that Saul eyed David. Saul, Saul. Keep in mind, the word Saul is going into seeing. Get it? Saul. Saul eyed David. Why did he eye David? Because the women were singing. Saul has slain his thousands and David is tens of thousands. That right there made Saul sour. Okay? And right when they sung that song, he started eyeing David. And it came to pass that he took a javelin and he threw it at David, but David got out of the way twice. Okay? What is that going into? That's going into divination. Saul saw the ministry of the prophet Muhammad showing up in Mecca with 10,000 converts, 10,000 Muslims. And what did he do in Galatians 1 and 8? He cursed it. He said, though we are an angel from God and we preach to you another message, let him be a curse. But it didn't happen. He was unsuccessful. He could not curse Islam because Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. And by 2050, 2075, we will be the largest religion on planet Earth. His attempt to kill David was unsuccessful. Now think about Paul, man. This man was a murderer. He murdered Jesus on biblical record and hid him in the sand. Don't nobody know that it was Paul's fault why Jesus has to come back and die publicly. Not only that, he tried to kill the prophet Muhammad, peace of blessings be upon him, and hide his body in the wilderness. Okay? He tried to curse Islam. The only thing Paul was successful at killing was the Christian church, just like he used to do. That's what he was good at. The only thing Paul did was exactly what Jephthah did. He killed his own daughter. He killed his own church. He couldn't sacrifice the son. Jephthah did not have no sons. So what was left to be sacrificed? The Christian church. Okay. And his daughter did not know a man. What's that going into? That's going into how Jesus will disassociate with you at the last day. And he will say, all you who say, Lord, 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 I will say unto you, I never knew you. She never experienced the Messiah because the Messiah is not in that New Testament. The Messiah is in the Quran. Okay. The real Isa is in the Quran. She did not know a man. Okay, let that sink in. Paul set his own church on fire. He killed Jesus on biblical record, hid him in the sand. He tried to kill the nation of Islam and hide that body in the sand. And then he killed the Christian church. He did that publicly. That's what he was doing. 
before he even became a Christian. He was killing the church. What happened to a good reputation before you come into the church? How are you just going to step into the church with a horrible reputation of killing his people? Even his own letters say, if you want to be a deacon, if you want to be an overseer, let him first be proved. Let him be tested. But this man just bypassed all of his laws. Why? Because he said he was the father. He believed that he was the prophet like Moses. He believed that he was the Deuteronomy and 33 verse 2 prophet. This is the truth. This is the truth. And I am sharing this truth right here in the house of David. Everything I'm bringing out, I'm not Googling. I don't see nobody else teaching or preaching on this. If they was, I'll tell you the truth. I would be listening. I would be tuning in. Okay? Because the truth is the truth regardless what color, what race. If someone was actively teaching on the truth of what Paul really did, I would be tuning in. But that's only available to you right here in the house of David. We have revelation upon revelation upon revelation through the types and the shadows, which is the Solomon concept. Solomon told us that there's nothing new under the sun. Everything we see today has already been seen. So like I told you earlier, don't go by what something means. Go by what it actually says. And Deuteronomy 33 and 2 actually says there will be a prophet coming out of Paran with 10,000 Muslims, 10,000 saints. Okay? That's what it was talking about, Muslims. Paul took the term saints and tried to push it on the church, but his church ain't no saints. <laughs> his church ain't no saints. His church is Christians. Okay? The saints are the Muslims. The saints are the ones who put away alcohol. The saints are the Rechabites. Okay? That obeyed their father's oath. The saints are the Muslims. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in this truth. <laughs>